تعبان انا رح اقرا بالانجليزي من الموجود هو موجود اصلا معكم بالمنشور حسب ما وثقت المؤتمر Uh, has more than 23 years of experience in irrigation and agricultural development, water resources management, water strategy, and institutional reform of the water sector, institutional uh, support uh, for the irrigation management transfer, water use associations, irrigation system design, wastewater reuse uh, in, in irrigated agriculture, training and capacity building, social marketing, and farmers' behavior, studies. Also, he, he worked with numerous in, uh, international funded projects. The latest is with the USAID um, in Jordan. Uh, and also in many countries in Jordan, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Molda, Mol Moldova, and Iraq. Uh, I will give him the floor to, to give us his presentation. Uh, I will give each uh, of our experts 15 minutes to talk and I think we will open the discussion by the end of all the sessions so, so that you can formulate uh, your questions according to the collective uh, presentations in the area. So please. Thank you Madam Chair. Sometimes to be, uh, to, it is, it's good to be the first one, so are, you are the luckiest to, to start <laughs> the presentation. Uh, I'm here going to present uh, a study carried by the uh, Water Management Initiative uh, Project, uh, and uh, I'm presenting it on behalf of my colleagues uh, in, the, in the project. And it happens that uh, the colleagues are on the panel <laughs> now with me. <laughs> in addition to an expert uh, who brought uh, the technology here that we use in the determination of the losses in the canal. To start with, I will give a, a background about King Abdullah Canal. It is uh, a 110 kilometer long concrete lined canal uh, built in stages. Started in uh, 1957 and the first stage in 1961 to 1964, and the, uh, it, it was completed in 1978. The head discharge capacity of 14.5 uh, meter cube per second. It's divided into two parts. Actually, uh, this is the division according to GVA. The first 65 kilometer long, it carry only fresh water because it uses for domestic and irrigation purposes. But the other part, which is the, the uh, 45 kilometer long, uh, it carry blended water from King uh, Talal Dam. Average inflow is about 180 million cubic meter, 120 in the upper part or the northern part, and around 60 million cubic meter in average for uh, the southern part, controlled by cross regulators, or we call them chick gates. And it is also uh, has SCADA system along the canal. The objective of the study is to measure all losses in the canal, uh, including the physical, the unmetered or illegal uh, losses, and the evaporation, and also to rank these uh, losses uh, for the sections. Uh, according the, to the efficiency of each section uh, and to recommend, uh, to recommend section for rehabilitation. What we use, the, uh, the approach used in this study is uh, the first we divide the canal into sections. So we study the losses in each section and the section uh, agreed to, to be the distance between two check gates. As you can see in the uh, you're right in the, in the screen that we have different chick gates on, the, on this map. And the distance between two chick gates, we consider them as one section. And we apply the water balance equation, which is the losses, it is equal the input minus output minus evaporation minus the change in the storage in that uh, particular uh, section. Uh, also, we, uh, we use two approaches actually in the determination, whether a uh, fast flow that we start the, the measurement at the beginning of the check gate and go directly to the end of the, of, the check, uh, of the section and take the measurement of the flow. 
then uh, we find that there is uh, this uh, approach has uh, some uh, problems, actually, and accurate data. So we uh, follow the other approach, which is follow the water approach. That we took the, the velocity, and then we take the measurement and wait for the same parcel of water to reach the end of the section, and then we uh, took the, uh, the measurement again for the flow. The technology we use, it is a new technology introduced to Jordan. We use this M9, the Sontec M9 uh, device, which has, uh, it has nine beams. Uh, and it is both a uh, boat based down looking uh, profiler. Uh, anyone interested in that device, it is found in uh, the booth of the WMI in the, in the uh, conference here. And it has a proven state of the art acoustic Doppler velocity combined with a window based software package. This is the software that we use. It came with the, with the instrument and we use it in, in our calculation in our measurements. In addition to the, the first uh, instrument, we use another one called Syntec uh, IQ. This one used to measure the uh, flow, continuous flow in the canal. The concept is to fix this uh, device in the bottom of the canal and to, to take continuous measurement of the flow uh, over more uh, 24 hours and, and more. But what we use in our measurement is to take it for 24 hours. We uh, use uh, two sensors, three sensors actually, but at the beginning of the, uh, of the check gate, at the end, and the other one. So at, at each 24 hour, we measure two sections in the canal. Here also, we adapt this uh, instrument to our condition because we couldn't fix it in, in the, the bottom of the canal. So we uh, uh, built a structure, a steel structure, uh, structure, so we put that instrument in the canal. Here is <coughs> how we, we use this spot in, in the canal. We put ropes in the, the two sides of the canal so we can pull this uh, device, this Sontic uh, M9, to measure the flow, instantaneous flow in the, in the canal. Here is for the IQ. It is actually, it was very difficult how to fix it in, in the middle of the canal and to keep uh, the batteries under the water. So we uh, try to adapt this instrument to our condition, our local condition, and we manage actually to, uh, to make the measurement, it was very hard work to do that. If you can see the, the, the green uh, rope here, that after we, we fix the instrument inside the canal, we take uh, the other ropes and we uh, hide this one under the water, so the next day we can find the, the instrument uh, and pull it uh, out. What we did in this study that we took more than 1,300 instantaneous M9 discharge measurement. Uh, at each uh, site, we took six measurements. It's so actually, uh, we want to guarantee that four of the six, uh, that they are very close. So uh, to, to, be, uh, to, to be used in our calculations. Any, uh, the, what we did also that we repeat the, the measurements in, during July and October, uh, and even uh, in the south, uh, southern part we uh, use also in April, we make some measurements. Uh, when we have uh, to measure the inputs and the outputs from uh, the canal, any, uh, if we pass by any pump station or any, uh, outlet in the canal. We took the measurement before and after, so to, uh, to have accurate measurements throughout the canal. Also for the IQ, we, uh, more than 14,000 uh, uh, five minutes uh, measurement were taken by the IQ uh, during October and April. Uh, we face uh, some problems in the uh, measurement because of uh, sed the sediments in the canal and some of the trash that cover the sensors. So we uh, end up of repeating some of uh, the measurements 
uh, after uh, the quality control check uh, the, the next day. And we face some problems even with the battery, some water leakage in the batteries. So we tried, we faced many problems and tried to solve it in the, in the field. Uh, what also we did that we trained seven people from GVA on everything. It is actually, they helped us in the measurement. They know how to use the, the, the instrument, how, how to use the software even, and the troubleshooting of all the problems that we face in the problem. We, are, we were in the field hand by hand. So we uh, can uh, ensure the sustainability of using this instrument even after uh, the water management initiative project uh, ended that uh, it will remain here for GVA and for Jordan to be, to be used. So seven people were uh, in trained on that. And even we addressed many issues in, in the measurement of this instru instrument. And we teach them how to overcome all of these things. We face a problem of the, for example, the heat, uh, the dongle there, at, uh, the transmission of, uh, of the data interrupted because of the heat. Uh, we contacted the company, we replaced the, the dongle, and uh, actually we noticed uh, that uh, it, it need, we, we, put, uh, we made some measurements while we are in the car under the conditions so we can uh, achieve uh, the, the, the required uh, results here. The, uh, to come back to the, to the results, uh, what we found that on the last, uh, on the first 65 kilometers in the canal, that the total losses in the canal was 24.5%, divided into 1% as evaporation, around 11% as constant or physical uh, losses, while around 14% as unmetered or illegal uh, use. Uh, the total water uh, losses for the southern part of the canal uh, accumulate for 38.1%, 06 of them as evaporation, 14.5 constant, and 23 as in unmetered or illegal uh, abstraction. Here also, uh, we try, uh, as we said, the objective of the study is to rank these losses according to the sections. So we have, uh, as you can see in the first one, in the first map here in the GIS, that we put the total losses per kilometer because, as I mentioned in the beginning, that we took the section as the distance between two check gates, and uh, the check gates were not uh, equal in distance. So we prefer to have a, a fixed reference, which is the uh, one kilometer distance, and we rank the losses in the canal. So if you can see here uh, the, the check gates here, and if we go to the, uh, the one in the middle, it is the physical losses. So we rank the physical losses. It's not necessary to have uh, the red color, which is the hottest spot in, in the losses in, uh, uh, the, as a total losses. The, we have the physical and we have the illegal losses. Actually, this helped GVA to identify areas where there are uh, potential for, for saving and for, for controlling uh, the sections in the, in the canal. The recommended measure from this uh, study is to refurbish the lining of the uh, sections that show high physical losses and also to refine the policies and regulation actually to reduce the illegal abstraction from the canal. Uh, another thing uh, is uh, uh, to repair the SCADA system. Actually, we face uh, some problems in the SCADA system that not all uh, the, uh, uh, the stations of the SCADA uh, system were working. So uh, it is a recommendation to fix this SCADA system uh, with GVA and to systematically, uh, systematically remove the vegetation from the canal. This made a lot of physical uh, problems to the canal because of the roots of the uh, plants. So uh, the removing of this uh, veget vegetation uh, cover is very important. And uh, as a next step, uh, we have two main recommendations from uh, the study, whether to fix the uh, parts or the sections of the canal that show uh, high physical losses uh, due to uh, old age of the, of the canal, or there is uh, a recommendation from 
the project is to convert the conveyor system of the northern part, which is the first 65 kilometer from the canal, from an open nature to be as a pipeline. And the next step that WMI will uh, try to help uh, GVA and the decision maker in uh, GVA and the Ministry of Water and Irrigation to take the appropriate decision by conducting a, uh, a previsibility study about uh, uh, the technical uh, implication of converting the canal into uh, pipe and uh, and also uh, to, to make a cost analysis of of this uh, option so GVA can take their right decision on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shaban, for this very, very fruitful uh, presentation. And I can tell that this, uh, the findings help the water sector to identify areas that are critical to, to address them, either in the physical losses or the illegal losses, or even in uh, closing the pipeline, the closing the ch canal to, into a pipeline that we are also keen to study and to see if it's feasible again. So thank you very much. Our next expert is the engineer Qais Awais. Qais Awais, besides what he wrote as a very modest bio in, uh, in the uh, papers of the ACWA conference, I know him as a colleague who have been very, very professional. All the years that I've known him, like more than 30 years, he's never had anybody, any enemy in the water sector. Or everybody loved him. So it's not only his experience, his also attributes that, uh, that I should talk about. So Engineer Awais, um, now he has more than 35 years experience in the water resources management, transboundary water dialogues, irrigation uh, organizations, water strategy, institutional reform of the water sector, drought management, and design of water balances. Decentralization and participatory uh, irrigation management through the water use association concept. Wastewater reuse in irrigated agriculture. He holds a high uh, diploma um, um, in highways and traffic engineering from the Faculty of Engineering, University of Jordan, and a BSc from the Faculty of Engineering as, uh, Asyut, Asyut University in Egypt. Um, also, he will talk to us about the reform. Uh, yes, uh, so please. Uh, and uh, as we discussed, we will give 15 uh, minutes for each presentation, and we will open the discussion by the end of the session. Thank you. Good morning. My presentation will, uh, I will speak about the uh, reform of G uh, GVA based on the new concept of the relationship between the uh, GVA and the Water User Association. Uh, for who doesn't know the Jordan... Okay. For who doesn't know about the uh, the Jordan Valley, the Jordan Valley is a low-lying strip uh, of the western uh, border of the country, uh, of the western border of the, the country, extend from the the uh, Lake Tiberia in the at the uh, 212 uh, meter below sea, uh, sea level to the uh, Aqaba, uh, Gulf of Aqaba uh, on the Red Sea. Uh, uh, and uh, 360 kilometer long and the average width about uh, 13 kilometer. Uh, Jordan Valley Authority was established in uh, 1977 established in 1977 uh, to, uh, to develop the Jordan Valley, to develop the Jordan Valley in related uh, land and water. Uh, the, 
total area which was uh, regular area which was developed by Jordan Valley at uh, about 36,000 uh, hectare and the irrigated area until now it's uh, about 30,000 uh, hectare. And this area distributed in about 10,000 uh, uh, farm units. The uh, hydraulic scheme in the Jordan Valley consists mainly of uh, the uh, 14 dams and uh, uh, the King Abdullah Canal and uh, pressurized uh, networking. And the current properties of the water management uh, are the uh, water allocation or uh, uh, for irrigation fluctuated from year to year. To year. Uh, the, that's based on uh, the availability of water in the dams and from the water which released from the transboundary uh, between Jordan and, and neighboring countries. And the, uh, there are increases also in the, in the losses, uh, which is in uh, physical losses and illegal losses uh, as uh, my colleague uh, uh, mentioned in his presentation, and the losses, the uh, physical losses. The physical, uh, the total, the physical losses and the illegal uh, losses in the different or in three levels from the uh, water resources to the uh, beginning of the uh, trans uh, to the conveyance system and through the the uh, uh, through the networking or distribution the water uh, low water tariff the water tariff uh, it is very cheap in the jordan uh, in the jordan valley it's uh, the water tariff uh, uh, in, jo in, J in jordan valley is uh, in layers four layers and it started from eight fills to 85 uh, fills but uh, the most of the uh, consumed uh, water lies in the first layer which is eight fills the average uh, water tariff is uh, about uh, 12 fills, but the total total O and M cost it's about 70 fills per cubic meter. Low cost recovery also the the low uh, the uh, cost recovery is uh, according to the WMI study which was implemented in uh, to, uh, 2016 about in the previsibility study for the uh, o and M entity, it was about uh, 70, uh, 54 percent, and according to the also the WMI study, which implemented for the Northern Jordan Valley, the uh, cost <coughs> recovery for O and M it was just uh, 42 percent, and uh, uh, the uh, the uh, weakness in using modern technology. Uh, we means and this is the limited of using the uh, uh, metering system such as uh, smart meters and filtration, uh, filtration system and uh, uh, this and the uh, also the, uh, the filtration system uh, insufficient or uh, the efficiency of filtration system system is very low Uh, the opportunities to improve the water management, it is uh, maybe to improve the management of O and M in uh, different levels for uh, retail uh, level and for conveyance system and, for, uh, uh, and on the pump station uh, and uh, the enhancement of legislation enforcement uh, to control the illegal use. Uh, now, the, uh, 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 the amendment of the Jordan, law, uh, Jordan Valley law was under process, and we ho hope that the, uh, this amendment will be help uh, the uh, GVA to control the, the illegal use. 
uh, improve the physical uh, uh, water uh, equali uh, quality. Uh, this is uh, through the uh, improvement, the uh, filtration system on the conveyance system and on the uh, distribution system. And uh, now uh, there are WMI recommended that to uh, ex to expand to uh, in using the modern technology within the uh, through the using the uh, smart meters uh, and uh, metering system in the distribution system and on the main lines or on main uh, conveyor system. Maximum the water value through the uh, uh, imply the implying the concept of water trading uh, between uh, GVA and water user association or between water user association and the farmers. Uh, the GVA reform approach uh, it was uh, uh, agreed with GVA and the. Uh, uh, and GIZ and the Water User Association should be uh, placed or into uh, uh, the two main axes. The first one is the separation between the bulk water supplier and the retail water uh, retail system, and to uh, implement the governance concept and the uh, uh, reform process. That means the responsibilities and rules for each of GVA and uh, water user association should be uh, clarified and defined and, and very clear. And uh, WMI, w, uh, WAS should be self as financial sustainability and the, uh, uh, to uh, uh, control and monitoring the relationship between two parties, GVA and Water Resource Association, uh, a regulatory unit should be uh, established uh, uh, establish, uh, uh, the first stage may be uh, uh, this unit uh, from GVA and the second stage may be as independent uh, unit. Uh, in early of uh, early the uh, early of uh, 1990s, uh, GVA has faced a big challenge about the water scarcity in the Jordan Valley, and uh, the and uh, some competition between the irrigation uh, allocation and uh, the domestic allocation, which uh, with the watch. So that the uh, uh, GVA decide uh, to uh, uh, decide to participate with the private sector with with the uh, water user association concept as uh, as a main tool of demand management. So that uh, 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 based on also on the GVA law Article Three. Uh, it was uh, the first uh, water user association uh, was established in uh, uh, 2000 and uh, uh, so, uh, the GVA uh, responsibility was transferred to the water user association uh, through the uh, individual agreement between GVA and water user association. The future relationship between GVA, it was to, uh, as GVA will be as bulk uh, water supplier and uh, to and to manage uh, through the managing King Abdullah Canal and dams and main carriers and transboundary water resources and water user association to uh, uh, manage uh, the retail water uh, through, uh, uh, including pump station and distribution network and a regulatory unit should be uh, a control or monitoring the relationship between two parties. Uh, WMI decide, uh, plan to uh, support w, uh, GBA and Water User Association institutionally and technically. Uh, uh, for GBA, WMI plan to support uh, or to improve the control center 
and uh, 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 country center in Deir Allah, and also to establish a call center in, uh, for all of GVA to receive the complaints from the farmers, and uh, uh, also to support GVA with a capacity building about the uh, a new technology and uh, about the, uh, 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 the call centers. Uh, uh, the support, uh, the WMI also support uh, uh, water user association institutionally and technically uh, uh, through uh, development the law, uh, by law, uh, which is uh, under the uh, GCC umbrella and designed the organization structure. This is, was uh, agreed between GVA and GIZ and water user association and uh, developed uh, the uh, procurement regulation, uh, prepared assist inventory database for Northern Jordan Valley, and prepared uh, a, a platform for GIS, uh, for uh, GIS in the Northern Jordan Valley through the converting all the net, uh, networking and infrastructure uh, to the GIS and developing the task transfer agreement between Jordan GVA and Water User Association. And also G WMI will support the uh, GVA and Water User Association about the seconding part of uh, uh, employee, uh, GVA employees to Water Association uh, through the, the uh, uh, maybe now uh, uh, the uh, umbrella of GCC now, um, maybe there are some uh, difficult or uh, about uh, uh, to transfer the GVA employees. And uh, the other uh, option is to go to, to register the Water Resource Association under the uh, Volunteer Association. And also the WMI developed uh, uh, or carry out a, a financial study in the Northern <laughs> Jordan Valley to, uh, to evaluate the actual uh, cost of O and M on a uh, retail uh, level. Uh, now, WMI also planned to uh, support GVE and Water User Association to uh, uh, improve the operation uh, services in the retail system, so that uh, the uh, WMI suggested to uh, develop a, a pilot area in the Northern uh, Jordan Valley in Pump Station 41 uh, with about 60, uh, uh, 60 farm unit. And uh, in this, in this uh, pilot, the uh, smart meter will be implemented with, uh, 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 with uh, a control valve and uh, data loggers. This is to uh, control the, uh, the, the, cons cons uh, the, uh, the water consumed by the farmers for more, uh, to, uh, for more equity and accountability. Uh, we we expected the, the result from the reform that maybe to decrease the the uh, water losses, uh, physical losses and legal losses, and to uh, decrease the cost of O and M, and to increase the efficiency and to to improve the uh, the level of service which supplied for the the farmers, and to maintain the infrastructure of GVE. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Alves, for this very, very nice presentation. We look forward, of course, to see the regulatory unit, as you described, which, is, which can control the relationship between your public supplier and the, and the water use associations. And also, we need to see more efficiency and perhaps also a tariff structure that might reflect the scarcity of water in the country. Our next speaker will be Engineer Tamer Al-Assad, 
who will talk about the master plan for non-revenue water reduction. You know that non-revenue water in Jordan is a vital issue that needs to be addressed. And uh, the, the project has developed a master plan for the reduction. I will introduce uh, Engineer Tamil Asad, our colleague who also worked with us in the water sector and now he's an expert in the WMI project. Um, Engineer Al Asad is a program development, management, and water management expert with extensive experience working uh, in the management and governance, in the field of the governance uh, in water, sanitation, and energy infrastructure. He has more than 15 years of experience working for donors, private and public sectors. Currently, is working as a water sector governance advisor in the WMI project that is funded uh, by the USAID, uh, and he is leading the governance component of this project. Um, he holds uh, a master degree from uh, Hubert Humphreys. He was a hum Hubert Humphreys Fellow in Urban and Regional Planning from Massachusetts Institute for Technology. So, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. I want also to address that we are actually a four speaker, not only me, uh, but we will have uh, the only me and Engineer Mohammed Shafi presenting uh, uh, the presentation. We have, we're supposed to have uh, Wael Alayan from Watch the Revenue Water Directors also co-presenting. Engineer Mohammed Shafi is a revenue expert in Jordan. He is one of the best revenue peop people in Jordan. He will also um, uh, give the second part of the presentation. I will start with the first part. Um, so I'm, the non revenue master plan, I would say this is the first time it's done for Jordan as a comprehensive and uh, holistic approach for the sector. And we'll explain why it was needed. And then master plan and its strategy and then uh, the summary of the co its components. So uh, why is needed? Because in Jordan, we have been investing a lot in infrastructure, water infrastructure, trying to reduce the revenue water. And for those who know the water sector, losses still continue to stay high, even with the large investment in infrastructures. We still have around 50% of losses. 10 years back, it was maybe even less, I would say. I was in the sector in 2007. We have 42%. Now it is 50%. So what's the problem? Still have, uh, we've done a lot of investment. Uh, rehabilitation and restructuring and expansion, but still the losses is high. The, so, and there was no holistic approach how to manage the revenue water. If Brian is trying to address the issue, but not really having uh, a, a, a result. So, um, we, when you look at this, the sector, there was no common uh, approach or guide how to uh, manage the revenue approach. And that's one of the key elements in this master plan. And where to start? It's a big problem with, under, with intermittent water supply, um, network issue, staff issue, resources issue. So how to do it? What to start? And how to make it feasible under intermittent water supply? And I will explain why it's difficult under intermittent water supply. So the master plan trying to establish a unified framework for the sector of Jordan on how to address the non-revenue water with introducing best practices and the clarity on responsibility, accountability, and at the end, sustainable approach. Um, so the idea of the master plan uh, is to optimize the investment. We have a lot of donors investing in Jordan, but still I, we believe that the investment can be optimized to achieve the target of reducing non-revenue water. So that's where the master plan come off and trying to uh, cl cl clearly put a strategy on how to mitigate the challenges and overcome uh, the, I would say, the pitfalls or unsuccessful stories happened before. So in brief, the master plan is a strategic level. So it's the starting point. It is only a strategic at the beginning, giving the overall approach on how to develop uh, or handle the revenue master plan. It should be followed up by a detailed implementation and uh, monitoring and evaluation, I would say, program which has the detailed planning, design for all the activities, 
the infrastructure and non-infrastructure activities. It's combinations of uh, also operation and maintenance activities, not only doing infrastructure, and then do the executions and re-planning and evaluate. So the master plan would say the starting point. There's a lot to do after the master plan. In the master plan, there were focus on several <coughs> values that we need to address carefully. Uh, these are the four values that the master plan tried to handle through having um, reliable, uh, reliable, let's say, features in terms of assets and reliable maintenance, um, making sure that you have a data qu quality. And this is a key thing, actually, in, uh, in managing the revenue water. Not having a reliable data, you're not having a reliable decisions on how to address your uh, the priorities. So one of the key features of the master plan that you have to measure. If you don't measure, it's become difficult to improve. So that master plan, will my colleague explain uh, the approach, we try to do top-down uh, control of the system through proper uh, um, and reliable information and operation conditions. Of course, you need to have the right staff to do the work. Uh, eventually, the water sector is understaffed in terms of qualified people to do uh, the holistic work on non-revenue water. It's not only the non-revenue unit, unit in the utility, it's the whole uh, utility businesses. It's the planning, the infrastructure uh, planning and implementations, the customer service, the operational people, the maintenance people. So ha everyone has to clearly understand where there is uh, rule come up. And of course, accountability is through having the uh, measurement and proper data at every step. If you don't have the data, you cannot create uh, baselines, you cannot monitor them, you cannot bring accountability and see where we are. And uh, the focus is how to improve it, introducing best practices, and then through auditing, and then implementing until to get the targets. Uh, sustainability is a key question also. Now, a lot of investment happens. Well, you start good infrastructure, then after a few years, what you designed for and you have to operation for, it doesn't work. Uh, deteriorated quickly. There was no uh, sustainability after the infrastructure. So with the master plan trying to uh, put any forward policies, process, procedures, and reporting uh, and clarity on how you sustain the system. So that's very important. Doing the actions and the investment is, would say, maybe the most expensive at the beginning, but actually the less expensive and more important is to make it sustainable. So how this is the master plan also focusing on. And the other things is to have a holistic approach. It doesn't work to have only um, <coughs> islands of solu isolated solution. It should look on the holistic <coughs> approach, and it should be integrating the local conditions, particularly under the intermittent water supply, which is a big challenge and to have a clear responsibility defined between the parties and of course addressing at the end the customer needs and the technical solutions in the sector. Now, in brief, the current thinking, this is how uh, I would say we summarize how the investment done in previously in the water sector. Major investment done in the meters, network, software, equipments, uh, even some institutional support there and there and operational improvement, but uh, does not really lead to the results. Still, no revenue uh, reduction is an aim not achieved. There is no change. The new approach is focusing that investment has to be uh, in line with sustainable practices. Uh, we have to have um, a, st a, f f a, st a clarity on how to do that. That's where we'll explain in the next slide with my colleague. So uh, the sustained practices has to be introduced, where to invest, how to invest, and then how to um, to monitor and inspect and uh, check the causes, focus on priorities and analyze them. So this is, um, that's where you are to, to, to include internally more uh, monitoring and auditing. And the key things, if you don't have uh, really a proper monitoring system inside your system, you cannot know how you will target your non-revenue measures and actions. So in line with the investment, you have to have better uh, monitoring and uh, auditing internally in the system, then you can see how you, you achieve the results. So to explain further, I will ask my colleague Mohammed Shafi to come and explain the concept in, in detail. Thank you. Thanks. The, the classifications you see is category A, B, C, and D. 
and to ensure this approach that Tamer talked about is sustainable and reliable and accountable and all of these good things, we have designed a certain uh, progressive benchmark of what does it mean to be at level A, B, and C. What are these levels? And this is where we see utilities. We are level A. All of Jordan is level A. <clears throat> so if you're in category A, you have problematic intermittent supply or and or you have incomplete metering of resources, your customer metering is not in order, your system is, not, is out of control. It's a combination of working on each water system and making sure that each water system passes a certain criteria of what does it mean to have evolved to the next level. Why did we need this approach? Because in many of these non-revenue water projects where we put millions of dollars of investments, you come out with a lot of infrastructure work, some training, but you cannot prove that you have moved forward. So each level, you have to prove, yes, I have better pressure conditions. Yes, I have completed the metering of all the resources. Yes, I have SCADA work etc. And I have my billing system in order. Category C is where we want Jordan to reach very soon. You have continuous supply, all the resources are uh, metered, SCADA is working, DMAs are functional, and uh, the customer meters are accurate. You can find areas in each utility that are close to be level category A, B, and C, but missing a small portion in some cases, and in other cases missing a huge portion. Once we get there, we can move forward. So if we are in category A, we only apply, we focus on the actions to, to go to category B. We prove them, and we, advise, we, we devise the capacity to sustain all the daily work. Same with category B to C, that I will mention forward. This is a challenging category. We are moving from intermittent supply to continuous supply. How do we do this? Well, if by a step-by-step by, step by step approach, we can achieve this in the right way, as we will explain further. And then we go to category D. This is the final. This is when we start in investing in smart meters, in uh, sub-DMA, optimize pressure to the highest degree. Now, it's, it's easy to, to talk about continuous supply in Jordan, but what does it mean? We have a water system, it's out of control. The primary system is not guaranteed. We don't guarantee the wells, the resources, there's no scatter, there's no control. We have the network, very high elevations, low pressure, bad supply, low elevations, very high pressure, they get all the water first. First, we need to reach category B in the system. We take control of the primary system, we, ins we make sure the SCADA is working, and we supply the utilities and WAJ with exactly what is needed. And there are specific objectives and moving away from what is the percentage of non-revenue water? We're saying exactly how, what is the percentage of SCADA applications and metering? How many reservoirs? And these are the benchmark that the auditor and the donor can track and make sure they finalize them 100%. Next step, we go to the DMAs. One by one, we take the distribution zone and install pressure uh, monitoring, we fix the network hydraulics. Many of these networks are not hydraulically optimized. They are random networks. And then we go, now we go to the DMAs. One by one, we convert them to 24 seven. And each one has a specific design criteria. We, we say DMAs, many of these 
donor projects, they, they make the work, they, they install these equipment, but the utility cannot report what is my minimum night flow, what is my average zone pressure. They, because they cannot report, we cannot consider them that they have passed. So it takes infrastructure work, it takes operation, and it takes telemetry, reporting, monitoring, and, and the whole deal. What we hope to achieve in the end is a complete cycle of activities that start with assessment. We assess each, each primary system. What is the inflow? We don't have the information, that is the priority. <laughs> then we, after we assess, we prevent the problem. We can prevent losses through pressure control. We can then monitor. We monitor the flows, we monitor the pressure, we detect problems as soon as they occur. We have the capacity to do field inspections. We have the capacity to repair. And then everything, every problem we face, we classify it on GIS, on, on the maintenance system, and we, have, we close this cycle. Same with the distribution networks, and same with the customer management. And these templates are now being developed, uh, to be developed in uh, this year, with uh, working with the WAJ Nano Review Water uh, Unit, working with the utilities uh, as a cross-sectional uh, actions. And the main difference we are making with this plan, besides targeting what is needed, besides tar targeting what, this, what the problem technically, is telling them what is ex expected to happen. What data am I supposed to see when I visit your t utility as an auditor? There could be an auditor that goes and asks, show me the flows, show me the reports, show me the maps, and they should be available. Otherwise, these utilities are stuck in the, in the level and ideally should not be given any more funding until they move forward. And this is what we hope as a leverage by the donors in general to offer these utilities one such very clear plan and templates for reporting has been established. The plan contains some technical Actions per system, each primary distribution system has infrastructure components according to the level A, B and C and the utility has to be capacitated in terms of manpower and knowledge and vehicles and daily uh, procedures that support each level of, uh, that they reach in the technical part. At the same time we have cross-sector policies and standards and a responsibility framework that we are developing now. And uh, as well as the central utility level, the systems, billing system, GIS, uh, the business processes, uh, because the water loss work does not work in isolation from the rest of the utility, we upgrade the, the maintenance, we upgrade the customer services to sustain these processes. And in the plan, each one is, is evaluated financially for each water utility in Jordan at a high level. Of course, careful financial assessment has to be done technically in terms of infrastructure and the software and the systems needed. But in general, we have done a financial assessment for each one of these items. And we can, we, can, uh, we can take one pilot area, we can demonstrate it in the coming year. Uh, we start by controlling the resources, etc., and then we go to the 24-7, and this is the challenge, is to show that we can do it in a, in a small pilot. And in Jordan, we are tired of pilots, you know. These, these donors, uh, they come and start DMA monitoring in an intermittent supply area. Of course, it will not produce any useful results. We do meter assessment, we do smart meters before reaching results. Hopefully, this pilot will, will provide some financial feasibility related to performance-based contracts. Instead of moving one DMA by DMA by the utility, which is often not feasible, 
let's do it a turnkey solution. How can we outsource this work? What is the responsibility from the utility side and how do we know this utility on this network is ready for this transition? We are not preaching very high hopes. We are setting exactly the requirements and the expectations for a modest hope at each stage at a time. And thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm looking forward to the results of the piloting that you also already talked about to pilot this master plan. Now, our next talk is about demand management and tools for effective demand management. Uh, we have here the godfather of demand management, His Excellency Dr. Hazem al Nasser, who was the first to address the importance of demand management together with the supply management. So here we have our expert from WMI, uh, Noor Iso, who will talk about from the WMI, uh, from the WMI side about uh, the demand management, together with also uh, our engineer from that sector, uh, from MWI, from the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, Fatan Shaban. So I will introduce you a bit. Uh, so you are a civil engineer uh, with a uh, subspecialty in water and environmental resources and environmental leadership um, certificate, providing consultancy and engineering services in both water and environmental sector, water efficiency and demand management, engineering designs and water supply networks. You pr uh, provide strong experience in institutional development, including training, capacity building and behavior change, experienced working with USAID projects and other donors, and you have a diploma in social marketing. Welcome. Thank you very much, Engineer Suzanne, for the introduction. Um, so I have to admit that before, um, while I was working on this presentation, I was a bit um, skeptical and hesitant about the audience reaction to the presentation, especially our fellow Jordanians among the audience. Uh, now that we have completed a rainfall season for the 2018-2019, that we consider as above average rainfall, and the recent events of um, I would say catastrophic rainfall events that had brought floods to the capital Amman. And because we usually argue whether, why demand management at all um, for Jordan? Can we ask people who are already receiving less to even use less water than they're already using? So um, I have added a couple of slides to kind of demonstrate to you a couple of um, uh, numbers that uh, we have collected. Um, I can't find the presentation. But So I have collected, as I said, a couple of numbers that I'm going to run through to kind of um, give you an idea about the water situation and to reflect the reality of water availability in Jordan. So number two, which is basically Jordan's rank among um, the world as the water poorest countries. So we rank number two among the world. 
Another number two, which is the average annual depletion level, two meters per year of the main aquifers. Now for a big aquifer, two meters a year of, of, um, uh, is a very high number. Uh, 12 is basically the number of basins, 12 out of 15 major basins underlying Jordan that are being depleted beyond their recharge volume. And less than 100, which is the available, average available water for of renewable resources, or let's say the Jordanian share of a renew, renewable water resources every year. Now, if this seems like a, a big number, it isn't, because the poverty level of, uh, uh, is considered to be 1,000 cubic meters per year per person. So we're basically one-tenth of that. So talking about water demand management it has become an essential subject. If we look at the recent statistics of the number of subscribers, for the year 2007, it was around um, uh, 92,000 subscribers. And it jumped only in 10 years to 145,000 subscribers, an increase of about 57% in just 10 years. The question is, are we able to meet that demand? There's a huge gap between supply and demand, and there is an increasing number for several reasons of why we are having this increase in the number of subscribers. The government approach has always realized, which is the absolute response, of course, to increase supply. But Jordan has already exhausted its available options. Now, we talk about the DC, for example, the DC conveyance, which we're talking about a resource that's 325 kilometers away from Amman, the capital. So you can imagine the, the pumping costs and the energy costs, not to mention just a couple of kilometers away from here, we have the Zara Ma'in pump station, which pumps water to around 1,000 meters above sea level to carry the water to Amman. So again, there's, the cost of water is not just about infrastructure costs, there's also energy costs embedded. And of course, the anticipated Dead, sea, dead Red um, Canal. So the idea is, it's just about time that we have more focus on demand management as a tool to, as a, as a new resource of available water resources, for the government to take serious initiatives on making national initiatives in water demand management. Now, WMI, as it is the mission of USAID, to sort of foster a spirit of um, uh, self-reliance and self-sufficiency by uh, supporting and building local resources so there is no need for external support. <coughs> We have developed an approach, um, an action plan, a phased action plan for the water sector, for water use efficiency. Now, water demand management in general has four main components. One is economic. The economic component for, to achieve water demand management is usually we beautify it by calling it restructuring of the water tariff. But what it usually means is increasing the water tariff for customers. This option has been actually dismissed in, sort of, in terms of demand management. Now, we cannot argue that increasing the tariff will definitely achieve cost recovery for utilities, which are already suffering. But in terms of demand management, there are studies that have shown that there's an inelastic relationship between water demand, or the consumption, and the increase in the water tariff. Plus, there is sensitive issues with increasing the tariff on the public you know, in, in, in general terms. So this option was dismissed. So we foca focused on the remaining three components, which are the technical, in terms of innovative technologies and water saving devices, in terms of legislative, looking into local regulations and codes and see where there are potentials to um, increase water demand management response, and then the education and outreach, which is a component that we can um, always um, um, use. Now, for WMI, I'm going to demonstrate to you some of the main activities that we have conducted so far in terms of water demand management, which we see as, uh, as activities that have an impact um, and a different approach than that, the approaches that were developed before. The first one was the establishment of a water demand management unit at the water utilities. Now that by itself sounds like an absurd idea. Why would you um, encourage an entity that sells a commodity to encourage its customers to use less of this commodity. But then, 
This is not completely true when talking about water scarce countries. Because by then, if you don't have sufficient water to supply to customers, then you are compromising the level of service that you are giving as a utility. And therefore, the water utilities need to be the main drivers of water demand management in Jordan. We started this initiative uh, with, at Miyahuna. We have looked through their organization chart to see where it best fits to have the water demand management unit. And for us, the customer, direct, the customer um, service directorate was the best fit simply because when you're talking about water demand management data or um, activities or interventions, they are tied pretty much to customer information. Um, we're supporting the Miyahuna utility uh, for the time being, the recruitment um, and the staffing of the unit, and we have developed together an action plan uh, that has been approved by Miyahuna's board, and we look forward to establishing a new unit at the Yermuk water utility and the other uh, Aqaba water utility as well. Now, we have an outreach program for schools. Uh, now, it also covers the hotels, but I'm going to focus here on the schools component. We have so far trained 4,500 students all over Jordan, covering the north, middle, and southern parts of the country. Um, we covered public and private schools, males and females. Um, the thing is, the, the, we wanted this training not to be a conventional training and to deviate from what other trainings were, is that we ha wanted to ensure sustainability of this training. So we um, uh, basically contracted with a local NGO that does an ongoing certification program of schools. So we embedded or modified the criteria for the selection of the schools which are you know, certified as eco schools to adapt water management or water use efficiency uh, standards and criteria. And they have a running program where they have over 150 schools that are certified. And therefore, um, we assured sustainability with um, uh, just by adding those criteria and sort of giving this activity to this um, NGO. Along with that, we have a retrofit program, and I have some maybe, those are pictures taken during the training, some interesting photos that I would like to share with you with, for some of the schools that we uh, actually retrofitted. Now, if you look to the picture at the right, the faucet right there, the, I would say the average um, flow rate of such a faucet was from 14 to 16 liters per minute. The local code states that the the water um, flow rate should no be should not be more than four and a half liters per uh, minute. So we're talking about triple the standard. And the of course there are other pictures that I can share with you later that show the situation after the retrofit program. We're talking about participation of 52 males. We try to balance between males and females. And then, of course, there was a calculation of the adoption rate just to see what the response was. So we had a pre and post assessment because we needed, our project is result-based and we needed to provide evidence of the impact that our training has left. And that's why we had um, higher adoption rates for the students from age uh, or grade one to grade five. Uh, as compared to um, the secondary or uh, elementary uh, school stages. Now, another activity that we did is the when we looked at um, rainwater harvesting. Now, the local regulations do state that there's got to be um, a, a rainwater harvesting tank, but people sort of misuse the term, and instead they build a tank to be filled by the water utility water. And uh, another issue is that at the, um, the municipalities and at GAM, the licensing department do not actually know what the proper size should be. They do not know how to calculate rainwater harvesting tanks. This is where WMI jumped in, and we provided technical plus the just lot of support, if I may say, to um, um, build the capacity of those at the licensing departments to be able to properly measure the rainfall tank sizes. And we have provided them with a guide uh, to support the licensing procedure. In addition to that, uh, we were lucky enough that while we were doing this activity, there was an ongoing amendment on the building's regulation, whether for the national one or the GAM one. And we have clearly stated that it, it's mandated to construct a rainwater harvesting tank, rainwater harvesting tank, and not to be replaced by a fine of any sort. 
Um, here are some of the analysis that we ran. Um, for the first time, the, in cooperation with the Ministry of Water and Irrigation, we have managed to calculate the um, rainwater average rainwater harvest uh, average rainfall uh, per um, district. Uh, this is the tool that we have developed. This is the licensing. Oh, so whenever anybody goes for licensing in a GAM, there is the, this screen that shows on the oracle. And we have included rainwater harvesting as a requirement, as you can see there. OK, another activity that's interesting as well is uh, what we call the WaterWise Homes. Um, it's a national campaign that we're going to start in cooperation with Miahuna at the very beginning to uh, encourage customers to purchase water-saving devices. And I don't want this to so sound as if we're trying to sell the product, but the fact that we want people to buy and make the decision of buying because this is when people are taking it seriously and to, sustain, for, to ensure sustainability of, of uh, the water saving devices installed. So the idea, we have initiatives by the utilities to distribute those water saving devices for free. We are trying to avoid that as possible. As I said, we want to make that as a culture and to sustain the impact. Um, in order to do that, we, have, we are developing a um, national sort of communication campaign to send out the message that we're developing this campaign. There's going to be a website available at Miahuna as a sub-page to um, uh, inform the customers about this activity. We are going to be encouraging customers because we've had, I wouldn't say, the most successful experience with people being reluctant to, to buy or to install the water saving devices because of certain technical issues. For example, some of them fail to perform well under low pressure. So we um, have investigated the market to make sure that we have the best technologies out there and uh, we will be providing a package of incentives that goes along with the purchase of these equipment. Um, there is going to be categories of customers depending on what water saving devices you purchase. Some of them are going to be like bronze, silver, platinum, and gold customers. Um, maybe I don't want to take longer than I should because it's already been 12 or 13 minutes, so I still have two minutes to go. Um, the last activity that I will talk about is the upgrade of the local water efficiency related standards. Now, if we look at um, the Jordanian code or the local market, let's say, um, it is rich with different types of water uh, using fixtures, but most of them do not meet the local standards in terms of water efficiency. So what we did in collaboration with the Ministry of Water and Irrigation is that we looked into all the water saving or water efficiency related standards and then um, we selected two standards that are related to be studied or later investigated by JISMO, which is the Jordan Standards and or um, uh, Meteorology Department, to uh, check whether we can upgrade them into technical regulation in the sense that instead of being voluntary standards, they will become mandatory standards. And uh, we have now succeeded so far to um, uh, receive the approval from the Technical Review Committee to upgrade the standards. And we're just waiting for finalizing uh, of those uh, two standards. We have other interventions that I'll go briefly on. We're developing a mobile application for the sector. We're redesigning the water bill for, um, to the two water utilities. Um, the idea here from a water demand management perspective is that we want the water utility, which is the link between, the direct link between the utility and the customers to be more informative about the water use of the customers. We have a retrofit programs working with the Ministry of, uh, uh, with the um, communication department at the Ministry of Water and Irrigation to ret for a retrofit program of the major office buildings of Amman and a training for female plumbers in the South. Um, so in conclusion, um, there are many tools to achieve water demand management. Um, Jordan has its unique setting in terms of availability of water, um, continuity of water supply, the cultural aspect and demographic aspects. So not necessarily all water demand management tools are effective for Jordan. We have in our action plan investigated um, most of those um, options available and tested and based on lessons learned, selected certain interventions that best tool to achieve uh, water demand management in Jordan. So thank you very much.
Thank you so much. And I really read the guide that you have provided or you have developed, and it was really a very good tool for municipalities and elsewhere to use it in, for the code system. Now, I will uh, welcome also our colleague from the Ministry of Water and Irrigation. You have very little time left. Uh, but we really want to, to see, as you are working in the demand management unit, your sus the sustainability for such initi initiatives of the project and how you are going to build on them. She has many capabilities for water demand management and 10 years of experience, best management practices, water saving devices, and please share with us some of your insights. Thank you. Thank you. طبعا رح تكون المحاضرة عن واقع المياه في الأردن وإدارة الطلب على المياه الأهداف الاستراتيجية للمياه وضعت استراتيجية المياه لعام 2008-2022 الأهداف الأساسية كانت تزويد المياه بكميات كافية وبنوعية عالية وآمنة فهم أعظم وإدارة أكثر فاعلية للمياه الجوفية والمياه السطحية نظم بيئية مائية صحية استخدام مستدام للموارد المائية تعرفة أثمان المياه عادلة ممكن تحمل تكاليفها وتعكس الكلفة الحقيقية بالإضافة إلى التكيف مع النمو السكان المتزايد والتنمية الاقتصادية عبر قطاع المياه ومستخدمي المياه طبعا لتحقيق هذه الأهداف الاستراتيجية تم وضع عدد من السياسات لتحقيق هذه الأهداف اليوم رح نحكي عن سياسة إدارة الطلب على المياه الهدف من سياسة الطلب على المياه التي أقرد من قبل مجلس الوزراء في عام 2008 هو الاستفادة القصوى من المياه المتاحة الحد من الهدر والمحافظة عليها تقليل الفاقد وتعزيز مبادئ استخدامها بأعلى درجات الكفاءة طبعا سياسة إدارة الطلب على المياه تضمنت محورين رئيسيين المحور الأولاني كان تحدث عن القطاع البلدي والسياحي والصناعي والمحور الثاني عن قطاع الزراعة المروية بالمحور الأول كان المجال الأول في المحور البلدي اللي هو مجال البناء والمواصفات والمقاييس قامت مديرية الطلب على المياه بالتعاون مع وزارة الأشغال العامة والإسكان على إدراج المواصفات الفنية للأدوات والقطع الصحية في الكود, في الكود الموحد للمياه والصرف الصحي كما قامت بالتعاون مع مؤسسة المواصفات والمقاييس على تطوير مواصفات فنية للأدوات المستخدمة للمياه الآن تقوم بتحويل هذه المواصفات الفنية إلى قواعد تفرق القاعدة عن المواصفة أن القاعدة ملزمة أنا بضمن أنه يكون السوء خالي من الأدوات الصحية غير, غير الكفوة كما قامت مديرية الطلب على المياه بتمويل من اليو اس ايد بإنشاء مختبر الكفاءة المائية في جمعية العلمية الملكية وذلك لفحص القطع الصحية وإدراج معايير كفاءة استخدام المياه في عدد من الجوائز والشهادات العالمية والمحلية مثل جائزة الملك عبد الله الثاني للتميز شهادة المفتاح الأخضر للمنشآت السياحية وشهادة العلم الأخضر للمدارس البيئية في مجال أفضل الممارسات تم تحديد فئات كبار المستهلكين طبعا لكل فئة من الفئات تم دراسة لازم أفهم أنا كيف المياه بتتوزع في كل قطاع من القطاعات بيتختلف حسب طبيعتها مثل القطاع أكيد الدوائر الحكومية بيختلف عن القطاع السياحي من حيث استخدام المياه فحتى أنا أقدر أعمل برامج في كفاءة استخدام المياه لازم أعرف أنا كيف دراسة كيف توزيع المياه في كل قطاع من القطاعات بعد ما تم فهم أين تذهب المياه في كل قطاع تم إعداد أدلة بأفضل الممارسات لكل فئة من الفئات المستهلكة لكل قطاع من القطاعات حسب الاستخدام تم تحديد أفضل الممارسات كما تم تنفيذ برامج في كفاءة استخدام المياه للقطاعات المختلفة بالتعاون مع شركات المياه والممولين والجهات المانحة استهدفت طبعا القطاع السكني الدوائر الحكومية المساجد المدارس والفنادق في مجال المصادر المياه غير التقليدية في مجال إدراج الحصاد المائي ضمن كودة تزويد المباني بالمياه والصرف الصحي إعداد دليل إرشادي لإمانة عمان كبرى حول كيفية حساب حجم الخزان الأمثال ويتم الآن التعاون مع وزارة البلديات لإعداد دليل مماثل حول حساب حجم الخزان أفضل كما يتم الآن التعاون مع الأمانة والبلديات لتعديل النظام لكي تكون إلزامية تنفيذ الخزان المائي في في عملية 
اللايسنسنج للخزة للبناء كما تم تنفيذ أبار حصاد مائي في إسكانات المكرمة الملكية في مجال حدائق الندرة المائية تم إنشاء حدائق حدائق الندرة المائية ما بعرف هذا المفهوم يعني هو في بعض المفاهيم زي حدائق الندرة المائية حدائق بس فيها مثلا استخدام نباتات تتحمل الجفاف إني أنا بركز النجيل بقلله بزيد الأرصفة في الديزاين كيف إنه يكون في كفاءة أكثر في استخدام المياه في مجال التوعية والتدريب وبناء القدرات يتم تدريب ورفع الوعي بأفضل الممارسات في كفاءة استخدام المياه في كافة القطاعات في السياحية في المستشفيات في المدارس والقطاعات التجارية قطاع الزراعة المروية تضمنت السياسة مجموعة من الإجراءات والبرامج مثل تحديد المسؤوليات مراجعة الأنظمة والتشريعات إعادة النظر في تسعيرة المياه وضع برامج تحفيزية للمزارعين لرفع كفاءة استخدام المياه إعداد أدلة إرشادية للمزارعين لتطبيق أفضل الممارسات في رفع كفاءة استخدام المياه تدريب العاملين في هذا المجال وبرامج توعية المزارعين شكرا لحسن الصلاة نتيجة ضيق الوقت رح نأخذ بس سؤال واحد لكل حدا من ال. فهم نأخذ سؤال لكل حدا فالسؤال وبتحكوا لمي متوجه بليز. One one question is to per per expert and you say your name and to whom you address your question. يعطيكم العافية شكرا للمتحدثين جميعا سؤالي للأستاذ تامر لأسعد على موضوع الاستراتيجية للنون ريفينيو ووتر هلا في الموضوع النون ريفينيو ووتر الاستراتيجية والابروتش اللي وضعتوه يعني ثيوريتيكال مبين انه ويل بريبيرد يعني محدود جيدا وماخذ بعين الاعتبار كل المجرمنتس بس شو بتتوقعوا النتائج النهائية من ناحية انه خفض الفاقد المائي بشكل عام لانه انت حكيت انه مثلا موضوع اعاده تاهيل الشبكات كانفراستراكشر ما جابت نتائج عاليه جدا فاذا هاي ما جابت نتائج هل الابروتش هذا متوقع يجيب نتائج افضل ولا اي بيرسنتج بكون اور تيك اول ذا كويشن In a brief, actually, we were hit at the beginning where we asked to have um, in the master plan what is the target. We are hesitant to put the targets. And the reason for that, um, it depends how you are moving and implementing the master plan. Because the master plan needs resources. We are not talking about the project also. Uh, we talk about the human resources. We talk about the operation and maintenance budget to be sufficient to maintain the system. Uh, now, to put a target without knowing how you can um, provide the available resources to implement the plan correctly, not only infrastructure, which have been the focus, which is more, what we think is more important than sustainability, is a question. Uh, that's why we didn't put a target, but we put a priority, and we didn't present any figures, but in all uh, steps, how much the cost needed for capital investment, for operational, improvement and for maintenance. So everything was has a budget. Now, uh, to ensure that, you have to uh, make resources available. Also, you have to rethink how you doing your infrastructure. For example, just a quick example. Establishing DMAs uh, is not standardized in Jordan. You will sign a DMA with uh, pressure elevations of 67 meters. Best practices, this is, will not work. It will you continue to have high losses with this level. Uh, in MCC program, for example, in Zerka, we use 30 meter. If you, that's a better uh, DMA that could achieve results. Even if you want to put more results, you have maybe go even less difference in elevation. So it depends how you are moving with uh, in doing this. So that's why infrastructure before we're focusing on expanding and enhancing supply, but not really having the infrastructure uh, restructured in the way to help you and uh, to help managing the revenue options. In addition to the difficulties you having under intermittent with supply, which is I didn't explain much, 
uh, you can't really do much in improving physical uh, losses under intermittent water supply. It will be a very, very difficult job. So the idea you have to move to a kind of a more longer supply period to do uh, an effective approach. All this is an issues and challenges that should be addressed step by step approach that the master plan try to introduce. Thank you. Many thanks for all of you. Just I brainstorming about King Tral Dam. In the last storm, King Tral Dam was full, and we start to discharge water to the river. So, is there is any kind of idea that we need another dam? Because this dam will be filled twice by some treatment plants. So, it is 40 years old. It was not envisaged that Samra will fill this dam twice. So maybe Jordan Valley can think about that. Second question about King Abdullah Canal. Is this an idea that this leakage in the canal or lost water can be diverted to be a pipeline, pressurized one, instead of open canal with all problems we have it with open canal, crossing all residential area? When it was built, the people was not, not enough people there to pollute. But now, we, it is actually within the residential area. Thank you, all of you. I will ask, uh, answer the, uh, the first uh, question about the King Talal Dam. The King Talal Dam was spilled or, or, or overflowed uh, in uh, 1992 and in uh, 2003. Uh, this is, if you, uh, uh, maybe the cycle of uh, uh, the cycle of spilled in King Talal Dam each 10 uh, years, according to the historical data. This is. So that the, uh, there are uh, some uh, idea in the uh, GVE to uh, build another dam in the downstream of the uh, King Talal Dam. And the study, it was uh, implemented before about five years. And maybe the other studies mentioned that maybe construct different dams not one dams, different dams in the downstream of the uh, King Abdullah Dam. Thank you. Uh, for the King Abdullah Canal, actually converting it from open nature to a pipeline, uh, WMI is uh, will develop or introduce a previsibility study to study this option. Uh, actually, it is it. Uh, it is in the table now, but the problem is about the water quality inside uh, the pipe and the measures to overcome any degradation in that uh, water quality because uh, the canal is used not only for irrigation but also for municipal uses. So it is on the table now and will be the next step for the WMI. Thank you. عماد النصري مدير دائرة النياه في بلدية نابلس <تصفيق> سؤالي انه يعني شوية هيك انه احنا بدنا نروح لل... للاستراتيجية الفاقد الهدف النهائي انه نحسن الريفينيو ولا نقلل البلاك نوس ولا إن... نشوف اذا في فاقد بالشبكة نفسها يعني يعني أنا شوية هيك يعني معظمنا نحكي انه نحسن الريفينيو يعني نجيب مصاري احسن فاهم غلط فاهم صح مش عارف Uh, of, of course, improving revenues, that will be uh, uh, a result. But if the ultimate, of course, is improving the service level uh, and improve uh, water availability. And uh, I mean, basically, in a scare country like Jordan and Palestine, we don't have the luxury to lose water. So we need to save water, particularly the physical losses. Maybe the commercial losses is already consumed for the majority of it, but at least uh, Physical losses, we need to save it. We don't have enough resources. So actually, the ultimate is to save uh, the available water. That will lead to improve supply level or service level, etc. 
and providing uh, enough pressure to the people, reliable services, and ultimately, you will have better revenue. When you have better revenue, of course, you will have better resources to maintain and sustain your system, which is actually a byproduct needed to keep the, uh, the system uh, well maintained. Yes. Calculated the cost of providing water um, compared to the, the the sorry Jamie Workman with uh, AquaShares um, has Jordan calculated the cost of water provision the average cost per cubic liter um, compared to the average uh, tariff it's it's sold at yeah let me take this question yes we have uh, detailed financial analysis on how much the cost. Uh, of supply and how much uh, average revenue, uh, maybe even revenues with different, uh, would say, use type. We have actually the tariff for residential and non-residentials. Uh, frankly speaking, the cost of uh, supplying water is not covered by the average tariff for all the users. It's way be it's way below, uh, particularly for residential part. The residential part is is not being even paying the 30 to 40 percent of the total cost. Non-residential customer actually they paying that total cost. So that's why the cross subsidy. But at the end, the water sector, particularly wedge with its utility companies, are suffering of uh, financial uh, deficit, a huge financial deficit. In total, actually, uh, of, if you include the total cost, which is the infrastructure, it's around a quarter billion JD annually, which is a huge losses. And that's one of the issues that prevents sustainability and in maintaining the system, because always there is pressure on financial resources that you need to have the right uh, tools, people, um, um, actions, and investment to do actual revenue motors. So we are in a viscous cycle. That's where we have to break. Yes. Sorry, just as a follow-up, you mentioned those numbers um, against operation and maintenance cost, or are you including capital costs from the beginning for the 30-40%? No, for the 30-40%, uh, it's, uh, it depends. Uh, it's in, for residential, it is the operational cost. If you add the total cost, it's even more. Now, frankly speaking, if you add the future cost, it will be dramatically much higher. And and the figure one will be shocking because the future cost, uh, which include the additional resources needed to meet the demand, is really much huge than just maintaining the current infrastructure. And mainly we are uh, having redded, for example, on any other new resources, it's really expensive. And the expansion for the treatment plant, the water system, is really expensive. Uh, that's where actually the cost will be even much higher. And that's part of the problem that uh, we see that it is eventually, even if we do tariff restructuring or even improve, it's still I think in the future will be become more difficult and more expensive to maintain the services. Just the main two problems which are facing actually the water sector is the power consumption and non revenue for water. Each of one of them, the power, the power consumption is 40 percent of the wage budget. So this is really a big question which needs to be tackled. Second, the question non revenue waters again is about 30 to 40 percent is losses for non revenue of the water in this sector. As I understood just recently in WAG, they established a special department for these two issues. Though they are different professionality and they are different specialization, but they are established special, sorry, they established special uh, department to tackle these two issues. I hope that with the help, with the donors, that this issue will be improved very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all, and thanks, uh, Dr. Saqir, for all the uh, remarks. Thanks to our experts here. Thank you.